Chris Daly, and um, also my old church that I went to when I was a teenager. Um, there were people there praying, and I actually got an individual note from a woman who said, when I say I'm going to pray, I'm a real prayer warrior. So, so that was really um, a huge relief for me because, as Roy said, just before Ireland, Dana started to experience gallbladder attacks, and we didn't find out literally till the week before we left that um, he was probably going to need surgery. And so there was a real concern of mine that we were going to end up in the emergency room at the hospital in Ireland, and um, not knowing what it would be like there. But um, but just before we left, I just got this overwhelming ease um, of relief that that God was just going to take care of everything, and it was his will, whatever happened. And even if Dan ended up in the emergency room, I was okay with that. I don't know if Dan would have been. <laughs> but um, I was just feeling that God would have a reason for that. And so I think that the prayers um, really encouraged me, especially and Dan. Um, I know one of his concerns was um, we got huge amount of invitations last year. Almost every night we were there, we were at people's homes, and so... He had a real concern. He did not want to offend anybody by not eating their food, and he was just probably going to eat what they served. And um, and so he was really, you know, a little bit overwhelmed about that. And um, for some reason, Mick forgot to announce it in church, and they apologized over and over. So even though we only got invited to a couple houses, it worked out because we feel like Dan had more control over his diet then, and we feel God even in that tiny way watched it over. And I think that's, you know, I think that was really encouraging to know that you guys and other people were praying for us while we were there, and we took you along with us. And um, so, and he's really sorry he couldn't be there. He's, he was really looking forward to this, so um, just to know that. Are you going to say anything you to say? Well, he wanted me to make sure. Uh, Dan really... You know, of course, he leads the sports camp, and um, and so that's you know what he's really he really loves to do that. And um, one of the things he found out when we were there was that Sherry is a major Boston Red Sox fan, <laughs> and you know Dan from the Philly, so so this is like a huge you know. I'm glad you guys were praying because I'm waiting to fight on the team. So, but uh, anyway, um, what what the killer was was that the next thing he knows is uh, Nick Green has a Boston Red Sox hat. And so that was just like a no-no. And he just, he told Nick, we're going to fix that. So Dan is going to buy a Phillies hat and take it back next year. Nick will not be wearing a Boston Red Sox hat. And on top of that, he wanted you all to pray for Sherry because, because she's a Boston Red Sox fan. So he asked me to pass that along to you. No comment. <laughs> uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the craft camp. This is the first year that I did not have my best friend Hazel from the Irish Church helping out, but we survived. And again, and I was thinking of your prayers. We had a total of 75 children come through in four days, uh, 65 on just one day. And the reason we survived with our hair, some of us are a little grayer, but the reason we survived is we did have a lot of help from the Irish Church and some of the women and you know, the older girls helping us out. <coughs> The thing that amazes me about the craft camp is that um, they get to choose between six or seven stations a day of which craft they want to do. And we run out pretty quickly sometimes on the one that that particular child wants to do. And it's amazing that they come up and you know, I have to tell them, I have to be back, I have to tell them that we don't have any more spaces at that table. And the response is just to say, okay, what else can I do? And there's no tears, there's no whining. It's just such a blessing for me to be able to watch these kids just being excited about whatever we have for them. And then at the end of each session, one of us would do a talk. And, you know, 65 children trying to listen to us it didn't go quite so smoothly, but there were a number of them that would, you could tell were paying attention and enjoyed answering our questions. The other thing I want to talk about is how God, it was so apparent that he was working out the small details. And Deb just talked about one of them, just in terms of we were in more control of what we ate this year. But other things were, like, when we got to the car and still place, the car that we were supposed to have wasn't quite ready, so we were given another one. It worked out so much better than what we were originally going to have in terms of the storage of the incredible amount of luggage that we had with all the supplies. The other neat thing was, it didn't start off neat, but one of the... Um, Sports camp days, we had to actually cancel for the first time ever because of rain. And we were really struggling with, um, you know, why did that have to happen? And 
the day before, we, we, I think we had seen uh, an email from Roy about it. We were really struggling with three of the girls. Um, two of them were sisters from kind of a, a difficult home, to say the least. And we were just really struggling with them. They were really good to admit a hard time. And when we got to the camp the day that it was raining, we were coming there just to tell parents that they were dropping off kids that we were going to have to cancel. When we pulled into the parking lot, there was Nick playing frisbee with these three girls. And he would not have had that opportunity had we had the camp. He would have been driving all around picking up other kids. And it was, I think, the, kid, the girls walked away with a really good opinion about Mitch. And that's important because he's going to be the one that has that continued relationship. So just over and over again, we just saw God working out all these details. Um, I'm going to try to figure out what to say about sports camp uh, for Dan. But Again, that was another example of um, just God really working with us because we were a really small team this year. And we also didn't have a lot of uh, volunteers in the church for the afternoon of the sports camp. So the numbers were down, but that actually, for safety reasons, ended up being a good thing. And another neat thing about that was um, the very last day, the older kids were able to play a full game. And you can tell they're really, this is a softball, sorry, I forgot to mention that. You can tell they're really starting to to learn the skills, so it's just been really neat. Some of the same kids from previous years, they ask us to come back, um, so it's a great time. Uh, let's see, uh, last time I was here, I remember, I don't remember really what I said, but uh, I just remember just saying, um, God had called each one of these people on this team for a specific reason, for a specific purpose. And um, it was, now, <laughs> I would look at my mom and my dad and be like, no way. There's no way you can use them, right? But uh, <laughs> it's, it's just amazing how uh, it's just amazing how God can, can just use anybody to play their abilities or appearance or um, <laughs> Okay, so I'm mad at that. Um, yeah. But uh, just one of my favorite things was just how he used us. Um, like, I did a couple balloon animals things when I was over there, and I would never have imagined that, like, balloon animals that I've learned on previous mission trips, that I could actually use that to teach a gospel message. Or, um, like, my father and my mother learning how to play baseball or softball when they were younger, using those abilities to teach kids later on in their life. Or Sherry when she went to her garage and uh, gave craft lessons to kids. And, um, Again, my dad giving him the ability of bad knees so he can't run for space and kids can throw him out. But uh, <laughs> it was just, uh, just really, really amazing how God used each one of us. And uh, I just look forward, look forward to meeting uh, McKinn and all the rest of the people again. It was just a really awesome experience. This, this really is an opportunity to be involved in the global movement of the kingdom, the gospel moving forward. And the gospel is alive in Ireland in wonderful ways. Um, there are only 1% of the population, or less than 1% of the population, are evangelical Christians. Uh, and uh, 5 million or so people. But uh, if you watch the Eagles game today, and you look at the stands, that's about the number of people in Ireland who are evangelical Christians in one stadium. Uh, and yet there's hope, and really expectation that God's moving, and even hope that once again, in the same way that when the Roman Empire was collapsing, the uh, gospel went from Ireland throughout Europe for revival. Again, there are people praying that that would happen again in, in this generation. And so be praying for that, and be praying for, for your involvement next year. When uh, I first met Mick, he had a, a uh, map of County Wexford with the four major towns on it, and his vision and prayer was that there would be a church planted in each of those four towns. And uh, nine years later, uh, this year they've launched the third of the fourth. The third of the fourth. So there are now three churches in County Wexford that are evangelical, thriving, and uh, so God is on the move there, and we would love you to be part of it. Because they're planning a church in, in Gory this year, uh, as the week was coming to an end, Nick said, well, so maybe you should come for two weeks next year. And do one week in Glory and one week in West. So um, we're praying about that, wondering about that. Uh, don't know what that would mean. But think about 
and pray about your being part of it. Enjoy the pictures. Um, they're, they're part of our experience, and this, hopefully this space gives you a, a glimpse of what we've been all about for the trip. Thanks. Well, once again, thank you for, uh, for your time and your effort.